Joining us now is Walter De Vett, Head of Commodity Strategy at Standard Bank. Now, Walter, in terms of where you stand on this 50-50 chance, are we going to see gold edging up higher a little bit, or are we so concerned that we're going to see a double dip recession that actually the commodities have lost their luster up here? Yeah. No, we're certainly in the camp that we think gold's going to move higher. Um, you know, at 1600, there's a couple of factors working in gold's favor. And very important, we think, is that there's actually physical buying uh, especially in places like India, Southeast Asia, at these levels, which is very strong, supporting the price. But so does that mean that you're actually not expecting a double dip recession? No, we think the probability is slightly more than 50% that we're going to get a double dip recession. Uh, but that doesn't mean that gold needs to come off. Mm -hmm. Key to gold, of course, is whether liquidity and money markets continue to function. Over the past couple of days, uh, maybe the week or two, we've seen actually money markets functioning less, and that has uh, helped uh, gold pushing lower. Is it going to be the same story for, for copper and aluminium? Mm -hmm. Because they're much more, they're less a uh, hedge against inflation, and they're much more fundamentally yeah. relying on, on, on what we're seeing out there. Yeah, absolutely. Now, it should be different for, for uh, uh, industrial metal like uh, copper, aluminium, platinum, for example, where they've got great exposure to industrial production, manufacturing, where we see a slowdown in China, where we slow, see a slowdown in Europe and in the US. Now, Walter, I'd just like to take a look on your views on oil because they're very interesting and something that we can't forget about. You say even China can't lift crude prices, which won't return to levels seen earlier this year because demand is too weak. Meanwhile, supply concerns have abated and you think that fears surrounding the Middle East and Libya were just overblown. You also say that Brent should hold up better and that'll be a different story if Europe and the U.S. go into recession, which you say is a 50-50 chance. So does that actually, if that happens, how far? Far do you see Brent prices slipping? We think Brent can go all the way below $90, low 80s. Um, once again, simply because it's got a lot less exposure to, for example, the China, big exposure to Europe, big exposure to the US. And if these economies go into recession, we see Brent coming down despite the fact that there's a supply problem. And despite the fact that actually OPEC will do everything it can in its power to keep these prices, if they don't have a target price, they at least want to keep it stable. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's also the, the big incentive from OPEC uh, producers to, well, they've got an incentive to cut, but they also have an incentive to produce. And because they get more money, exactly, of course. Exactly, yeah. And we've seen over the past couple of years that they do break their own quotas very frequently. And we think it will be the same once again. And Walter, in terms of what we're seeing, I mean, what kind of time frame would you say that we're going to see a big drop in Brent? Are we talking two, three, four, six months down the line? Yeah, I think if we're going to see a drop, if the economy continues to slow, it's likely to be towards the end of the year. Um, right now, there are supply problems. We do have um, Gulf Mexico issues. As soon as that eases, we think downside will open up for Brent. Are you disappointed that, you know, when we talk about a worldwide recession, we talk about also the strength of the emerging markets, mm. but we haven't seen a decoupling. If we yeah. have a recession in Europe and the US, the emerging markets just won't be strong enough mm. to withhold and not go into recession themselves. Yeah. I think you've got to work with that assumption, right? I mean, we don't see China going into recession, but certainly if Europe slows, if US slows, China will slow too, because they depend on via the export market on these economies. So ultimately, their manufacturing sector can't hold up at levels where what we've seen the industrial production can't hold up so demand should slow for commodities there too. Because of the export so when do you expect that situation to change and therefore making I guess a little bit more stable for mm. commodities overall do we need to see um, a, a lot more spending domestic spending coming in from China coming in from India and will this take two to three years or are we talking a decade from now? Yeah I think we take we, we probably talk slightly longer than, than two three years probably five to ten years where the economy must shift from export driven towards domestic spending. Uh, that doesn't happen overnight. That is structural issues in the economy. And China is working towards it. But, uh, you know, as long as their currency is pegged, um, as long as, well, crawling peg, we think it's going to be a slow process. And Walter, in terms of the commodities, so you expect uh, oil to come down, a lot of the copper, a lot of uh, the, you know, the, the basic resources that are actually used for construction to come down. Gold is going to go higher in your view. Is there anything else that seems like a good buying opportunity, any, maybe platinum or any small metals that are likely to increase? Yeah, in general, in, in this environment where we see industrial production and manufacturing under pressure, um, with the, the, the really ease, easing of monetary policy, we still like precious metals in general, gold specifically, but we think as gold goes higher, platinum, uh, silver would also be pulled higher, not to the same extent, but certainly from current price levels off the fall, we think there's upside. All right, great. Thanks again, Walter DeVette there, Head of Commodity Strategy at Standard Bank.